Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I have a very special guest. He's back on our show, and I'm so excited to have him. His name is Danny Carroll, and he is an expert in terminal illness, and he's written many books, and he is on his way to writing um, a series of 500 books. So I'm very excited to have him on the show, and he's going to talk about his latest books, and we're going to briefly cover his first book that he's written. And I'm, you know, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to DMA World. They are uh, marketing consultant people who work to help small businesses become big business businesses. They believe that little businesses shouldn't be scammed by big marketing companies. And they believe that they could help companies, uh, small businesses grow to become large profitable companies. So try out dmaworld.com, a marketing consultant agency who cares about the little people. So Danny, tell me a little about, you know, we, we talked about your, your, your first book um, and, you know, it was very interesting because it was about cancer and we got really deep into, into talking about cancer. And, you know, I'd love to also, you came out recently with a book about breast cancer. And since this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I'd love to tap into that a little too. But before we begin, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and who you are and what you do. And I, you know, I'm very excited to have this conversation with you hey well thank you stacy it's uh it's a pleasure to be back on your show again um so uh brief background um i um i've spent the last nearly two decades uh researching cancer um i started i think in 2004 or 2005 um i'm not a doctor um i'm a don't hold it against me, but I'm a lawyer by profession um, <laughs> uh, uh, or by education and by profession. Um, I've spent my life in venture capital and, uh, and asset management and, and other business related activities. Uh, my research on on cancer uh, was caught was triggered by an unfortunate incident where I had a friend um, who was diagnosed with cancer and I funded her treatment and ensured her compliance. And she died within three rounds of chemotherapy. So I um, I committed at the time that I would find a, a better solution to the health problem that we know as cancer. Um, <clears throat> this is my published book uh, on Amazon. Uh, it's titled Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis. Um, this is targeted uh, primarily at terminally ill cancer patients. Um, I have spent the last eight years helping um, many term people who had been given a, a terminal diagnosis uh, and sent home to die by medical doctors um, to uh, to fully recover their health. Um, and the, I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm not a doctor, right? Um, and I'm not a magician either. I don't have a magic wand. Um, the the fundamental um, approach that I take um, is exactly the same. In in business, uh, we're taught on day one that uh, that you can only ever solve a problem by addressing the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. You can never solve a problem by addressing the symptom of the problem. Right. Now, in the in the near two decades of um, medical research that I've done, um, what I what I discovered is that, uh, and whilst it's commonly known that uh, conventional medicine is a system of symptomatic treatment, mm -hmm. um, what is not commonly known is that uh, all forms of uh, established alternative medicine um, are also forms of symptomatic treatment. Mm -hmm. So all of our established uh, treatment protocols basically are systems of treating symptoms. Now, <clears throat> when I uh, when I started my journey, whatever eighteen years ago, uh, to try and find the solution for cancer, one of the one of the key filters that I used to analyze different healing modalities was to explore whether um, it was a system of treating symptoms 
um, mm -hmm. or whether it was a, a modality that identified um, the cause of the problem or not. Um, and as I said, it was to my great surprise that um, that that all forms of alternative treatment, whether it's nutritional healing or whether it's things like the bark flower remedies, which is a, an English emotional healing system, yeah. um, home, homeopathy, Ayurveda, energy healing, uh, acupuncture, chiropractors, they that, 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 or they're all systems of symptomatic treatment. Right. So, <clears throat> so you mentioned breast cancer. Um, so this is this is the this is the uh, first book I've written. Um, this is based on the medical discoveries of a German medical doctor who was a, a, a specialist in cancer research. In medicine, he's called an internist, um, mm -hmm. and um, he was actually Germany's youngest. Um, youngest person to ever qualify as a medical doctor. Right. Um, so he was uh, um, one of those extraordinarily sharp uh, characters, sharpest tool in the kit. Um, mm -hmm. And um, he, uh, in 1978, uh, he, at the point he was the head of cancer research um, in a gynecological oncology unit. Um, right. Uh, for a university in Germany um, and uh, his 19 year old son was shot and murdered um, and two months after his son died um, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer an aggressive form of testicular cancer called a testicular teratoma um, oh, wow. with with metastasis to the stomach now at the time he was given a a one percent chance to survive um, and he survived that by, uh, I mean, he had surgery, he had his testicle removed and part of his stomach, mm -hmm. but he didn't have chemotherapy or radiation, um, which I understand many or most medical doctors do not. Mm -hmm. um, so when he survived, um, as the head of this gynecological cancer research unit, um, he was, uh, what he want, what he started doing was to interview um, the, the the female cancer patients that uh, right. that he was working with to see whether they'd gone through a similar type of emotional trauma or right. life crisis before they got cancer. And um, out of 200 women that he was working with, 200 had. And... Um, so what he started, what he started at that point, Stacey, was um, he started putting these women into different categories. Okay. So women who had had cervical cancer or uterine cancer or mammary gland or introductory breast cancer. He started pushing them into different categories of the type of cancer they had right. they had experienced. And what he started observing was that the women in the same category had all suffered from the same type of life crisis, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, <clears throat> so fast forward 39 years of cancer research with over working directly with over 50,000 cancer yeah. patients. And what this, what this doctor concluded is that cancer, we think today that cancer is this disease that sort of, spreads around your body um and what uh, what this doctor discovered is that in fact that is not correct so <clears throat> in his case um so he by the time his son was murdered um he was in his late 40s and then otherwise he was a healthy guy um right. and then his son gets murdered and then Two months later, he gets a, a testicular teratoma, a rare form of cancer on his testicles. Um, <clears throat> now he couldn't. Uh, he his original impetus to start this process was that he couldn't. He couldn't believe the coincidence between losing um, uh, a child and then getting uh, a cancer on a reproductive organ. And what he discovered after all of these, these years of research was that 
the tumor that came on his testicle um, actually had a biological function and a biological purpose. Okay, so the tumor on his testicle was actually designed to increase the size of his testicle so that he could increase um, his sperm and testosterone production, Mm -hmm. which was designed biologically to give him a greater capacity to be able to get his wife pregnant so that he could replace the child he just lost. Okay. Now, he didn't know this at the time. He was a traditional medical doctor, so he had the surgery, right? So... um, if one once he once he understood the fundamental biological function and the biological purpose, and in many ways, even in conventional medicine, um, there's a lot of agreement on the fact that the tissue that's added to the testicle um, mm-hmm. is functional tissue. So if you do if you do research into a into a mainstream medicine website, and you can do any of them because they're all pretty much the same mm-hmm. um you'll read if you if you if you read up on a tes- testicular teratoma you'll read that they talk about the different germ layers uh, that that are in this tissue and that it's functional tissue um so in many ways there's actually a, a lot of agreement in terms of the fact that this is functional tissue right. um so when he understood the fundamental connection between so his life crisis was the fact that his son was shot and murdered right okay <clears throat> what he what he learned from that and in his fun in his fund in his subsequent research is mm-hmm. that cancer that we think is this disease um is actually a survival biological right. program Okay, so in his case, his son was shot and murdered. Mm -hmm. Nature then increased the size of his testicles to increase his capacity to be able to get his wife pregnant, to replace that child he just lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the survival element in that particular program is basically that um, his son was murdered um, and um nature increased his capacity in order to be able to replace that lost child yeah okay now we're in we're in breast cancer awareness month okay Mm -hmm. so um you mentioned at the beginning that i'm in the process of writing a 500 plus book series that is absolutely correct um this book, Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, is an introduction to these to this medical doctor and to his medical discoveries and to the fundamentals of cancer being a survival biological program. Right. Um, the the plan going forward is that though so this is my my book on breast cancer. Um, I'm in the process of building a new natural healing media property called the Healing Tribune. Um, and the tagline is the cause of disease made simple. Right. Okay. So this is my book on breast cancer. This is available to read for free on my website, um, danny-carroll.com. In fact, all 500 of these books will all be a- available to read for free. Um, <clears throat> I don't want the uh, ability to the financial means to be a, a barrier in the right. way for, for people to be able to access and read these often life-saving uh, information. Yeah. So uh, this book is currently available for free on my website. And when I finish, um, there will be 500 plus books available, um, one on each disease um, that, you can, that you can read for free. Um, now, <clears throat> if, you look at the, if you look at the female breast, okay, there are biologically there are two key elements to the right. female breast. Um, so, being in Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, we will talk talk about breast cancer in some detail. Um, so, in the breast, uh, the the two the two main biological elements are the the mammary gland, um, mm-hmm. 
that is the milk producing part of the female breast right. um, and then the milk ducts mm -hmm. that, that connect the mammary glands through yes. to the nipple in order to evacuate the, right. the milk from from the breast okay so let's um let's start with the let's start with the mammary glands i mean if we if we break it down in terms of in terms of the frequency of diagnosis 80 percent of diagnosis is actually the milk duct um 20 percent of diagnosis is actually the mammary gland um mm -hmm. but it's easier to understand the mammary gland the biological purpose and function of it yeah. um <clears throat> we'll do the milk ducts after that so you can you can understand how that works it just it's a little more difficult in today's context to get yeah. your head head around what affects a, a milk duct and and why it behaves the way it does right. so we have the mammary gland obviously the primary purpose of a mammary gland is to lactate okay to produce milk the breast um is a nurturing piece of equipment although we today's society again we don't uh, we've sort of lost touch with yeah. a lot of the fact that you know, the breast is a nurturing piece of equipment right it's not a boy's toy um which most people seem today that that's his only real purpose right um yeah. so a woman will only lactate um either in the latter stages of pregnancy and right. when she start and when she starts nursing right because the purpose of the of the breast is to breastfeed the child right to uh, nurse right. the child now what happens they see with the with the mammary gland is that once a, once a mother stops nursing mm -hmm. then the mammary gland will dry up right okay? so you've stopped producing milk as soon as you stop nursing then then the mammary gland will 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 stop producing milk essentially mm -hmm. um now imagine a situation you're walking you have a five-year-old child you're mm -hmm. walking down the street you're with a friend you're not paying attention and your child pulls away from your hand and um, runs into the road and gets hit by a car okay equally could have been fell out of a tree or any anything where the child gets badly injured okay mm -hmm. now in the in the split second as soon as the mother hears tires screeching and turns around and sees her child laying on the ground in the middle of the road um that event basically will trigger the brain yeah crisis we have a sick child okay and the brain will then trigger the mammary gland to say crisis we have a sick child we need to nurse the child back to health again and the brain will send a signal to the breast to reactivate the mammary glands in the breast so that the woman the biological design of this process so that yeah. the woman can start lactating again the child's five years old right so she's not lactating anymore okay? right so she sees the child get hit by a car it will it will uh, she will immediately be traumatized by seeing her child laying in the road oh, that yeah. trauma will say crisis time to reactivate milk production we need right. to nurse the ch nurse the child back to health again so if you look at it in terms of the 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 cause and the symptom right okay, the child getting hit by the car and becoming injured and sick mm -hmm. is the cause of the problem right okay mm -hmm. the processing happens in the brain and the yeah. brain sends a signal to the breast start milk production okay now the breast is the output um, or the symptom of the problem okay mm -hmm. now back to my applying the same rules and standards of problem solving in business mm -hmm. into health okay in business we say you can never solve a problem by addressing the symptom right you can only you can only ever solve a problem by addressing the cause of the problem right okay? now the cause of the problem in this 
particular scenario is the child is now sick. The child got hit by a car. So mm -hmm. the child getting hit by a car and now being sick is the cause of the problem. Right. Okay. The breast, the mammary gland in the breast being reactivated and feeling the lump in the breast almost as soon as the child gets hit by the car. Right. Just a, is the symptom of the problem right okay so mm -hmm. in our in our current modalities conventional and alternative right we we do not focus on solving on understanding mm -hmm. and solving the cause of the problem the cause right. of the problem is the child is sick the purpose of the breast is as a, it's a nurturing piece of equipment right. in a cry in a crisis the 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 woman's ability to lactate and offer a breast to a sick loved one right. will, will be reactivated in a crisis so that the woman has the opportunity to be able to nurse the sick loved one to get them back to health again okay right. now it's this is the biological design. This has many, many effects, right? If you don't, if you don't nurse, then you're not evacuating the milk from the breast, and then the breast becomes swollen. So, just evacuating the milk from the breast, if nothing else, from the woman's perspective, um, right. helps to take the inflammation and the pressure out of the breast because you're evacuating the milk that's building up in the mammary glands, right? Because that's right. the design. It's supposed to be all supposed to be offering the breast of the sick loved one right but of course we've right. lost we've lost all um ability to understand in yes. today's society the concept right. of the breast being a nurturing equipment and okay mm -hmm. we we some people may still breastfeed when they have a baby right but the right. idea of breastfeeding a, a five-year-old or i mean you can even have a we in in our biology uh, we have we have depending on which way your brain is wired we have a we have a one one side of our body that gets affected by conflicts with our mother and our children yeah. and then the other side of the body gets affected by everybody else right so if that could be the child getting hit by a car which can activate the the, the mammary glands in the breast it can equally be a partner your husband right. or your father or your mother that can get sick that can also trigger the mammary gland in the other breast right okay. so the idea of breastfeeding your father or breastfeeding your husband um in today's society is, a, is an absurd suggestion okay mm -hmm. but that is the biological design okay now right. and nature nature has reactivated a woman's ability to lactate and what do we do in today's treatment protocols well if she goes to conventional medicine and they will remove the breast, right? Right. I mean, stupid number one, right? I mean, because the, now she can't breastfeed the child, right? Because she's had a breast removed, okay? Mm -hmm. And then she'll go on chemotherapy and radiation and, and and stupid number two, right? And stupid number three. I mean, and and unless and until that child is still sick, this biological program is going to run. Right. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter, Stacey, whether you have the breast removed or not, right? Right. It, it makes no difference because unless and until that child is still unwell, when in in um in conventional medicine, we have a concept called recurrent breast cancer. And right. that's where where a woman gets breast cancer on a breast that's been mm -hmm. removed okay and then right. the doctors will say oh there must have been some cells floating around or we didn't right. we didn't get everything and all of this it's, it's nothing it's nothing like that i mean let's let's use a an extreme example there's a there's a concept in um in conventional medicine called phantom limb pain okay mm -hmm. so let's say i have gangrene in my foot Right? right and i and i have my leg amputated right phantom limb pain is where you still feel pain in right. an organ when it's no longer there okay so right. i have 
I had my leg amputated because I got gangrene in my foot. And mm -hmm. after I had my leg amputated, I still feel the pain in the foot that is mm -hmm. no longer there. Right. Okay. The same breast cancer. I have a mastectomy. I have my breast removed. And then recurrent breast cancer is when I have cancer on a breast that's no longer there. Right. Okay. Same thing. I get pain in a in a foot on a leg that's been amputated that's no longer there. And it can be the same if you have uh, IBS or ulcerative colitis and you have mm -hmm. your colon removed. Yeah. Even though you have your colon removed, you can still you will still experience colon cramps, even though you no longer have a colon. Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't it doesn't make any difference whether the organ is still there or not. The biological program does not run in the organ. Yeah. The biological the biological program runs in your brain. Right. OK, so the child gets hit by the car. The trauma hits the brain. The brain is the control center. OK, so the brain will then trigger the breast to right. reactivate. OK, mm -hmm. you remove the breast. The brain is still triggering the breast. Right. So this recurrent right. breast. Down, so the brain doesn't care whether the organ is there or not. Right. Okay? You get pain. You get the phantom limb pain. The, the leg's gone. Yeah. You're still getting the pain. You're getting you're getting the colon cramps. The colon's gone. You're still right. getting the colon. Having your organs removed makes zero difference right. because you can never solve a problem. The organ is the symptom of the problem. Yes. The organ is never the cause of the problem. The life crisis is the cause of the problem. And mm -hmm. when we go through a life crisis, the brain is the control center. Okay? Right. And the brain will make changes in our biology according to our survival biological program. So mm -hmm. in, the, in the mammary gland breast cancer, the survival element of the program basically is to enable in a crisis, the child's sick, right? The child's been hit by a car, the child's fallen out of a tree or whatever, fallen yeah. off the bike or whatever it is, okay? The child's sick. OK, the mother is in crisis because she now has a sick child and nature is gifting her the ability to be right. able to nurse that child back to health again. And yeah. in the same way, all, all of all of the, these biological programs operate in a very similar way to a to a menstrual cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. So in a menstrual cycle in uh, in the first half of the cycle tissue is added to the walls of the uterus in order to facilitate the pregnancy. Yes. Okay. If you don't get pregnant, then the tissue is removed with bleeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tissues added, tissues removed, tissues added, tissues removed. Now in, in the breast, when the crisis comes, the child gets sick, the tissue is added. Okay. Right. The tissue is added in order to give the woman the ability to lactate again. Right. When the child gets well again, then the tissue is removed. Okay? Right. And the tissue is removed with something that we call TB mycobacteria, right. okay? which, which in today's world we think is a disease. It's not a disease. It's nature's way of removing that tissue in the same way the walls of the uterus, you bleed uh, if you don't get pregnant. Right. Okay? In the breast, the tissue is added. Once a child is well again, then the tissue is removed. Okay. Now, whilst that child is sick, if you have your if you have your breast removed, it makes no difference. Right. Okay? If you go on a vegan diet, it makes no difference. Right. Okay. If you if you have laetrile, uh, vitamin C, you know, ozone injections, or you go into any damn thing. Yeah. I mean, it makes no difference because right. the biological purpose of that program is to use the breast to get the child well again right. and unless and until that child recovers its health 
the purpose of that biological program has not been achieved. Yes. So, so it will continue to run. When the mm -hmm. child gets well again, then in the same way, these the, these programs, you don't, they don't run in your conscious mind, right? They run in your subconscious mind. Right. Okay. You don't sit there and think, oh, okay, I think I will reactivate my ability to lactate in my breast so I can nurse my child back to health. You don't think that, right? I mean, these are these are these are survival biological programs that right. have evolved over millions of years of our existence, right? And yeah. I mean, it's 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 really funny. I mean, if you know, you could we can see nature's survival biological programs in every element of our life. Except for except for when it comes to our health, right? I mean, you know, if you go to a cold country, um, people there are going to be white, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't need dark skin to protect them from the sun, right? Okay? If mm -hmm. you go to a hot country, you go so you go to Europe, most people are white. You go to Africa, most people are black, right? Mm -hmm. Because why? Why are they black? Because they're in a hot country, so nature has evolved in order to protect them in the environment that they live in. Right. Okay. I, mean, you, I, I live in, in Bombay in India, right? I mean, if you go up to the mountains and up to the Himalayas where it's freezing cold, all of the street right. dogs they all have long hair, right? Yeah. Because it's cold, right? <laughs> so they have long yeah. hair. Mm -hmm. you, come, mm -hmm. you come to Bombay and it's boiling hot <laughs> and they all have really short hair, right? Because it's really hot. So right. nature continuously evolves in order to help us to survive in yes. the environment that we live in and yes. the cancer program and what what i mean in in his lifetime this doctor basically unraveled the biological code and identified the life cause of every single change in our biology from a runny nose to a sore throat to a yeah. cancer to a Parkinson's disease, to a suicide constellation, to a any damn thing, right? Everything he unraveled entirely this survival. Once he understood the fundamentals, he understood how life crises trigger yeah. changes in our biology. Once he understood that, then he's essentially laid out. He's put to, he's put together something called the scientific chart of Germanic new medicine. Where he's, right. laid out, where he's laid out the life cause and the solution to every single change in our body, in our biology, to every single cell in our body. It's quite, it's right. quite an extraordinary body of work. Okay, so now let's uh, let's try the milk ducts on the on the milk ducts. So, if you look at the purpose of the milk duct, the milk duct is there as a vessel, right? It's a vessel to it, to help transport or evacuate the yes. milk from the mammary gland to the nipple. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the easiest easiest way to understand this, because again, we're so out of context in today's mm -hmm. society, it's very difficult for us to really get our head around what affects the milk duct. Okay. Right. So best way to understand this is to look at uh, to, to look at nature look at animals in nature okay yes now if you take a if you take no you take a sheep right mm -hmm. sheep's in a sheep's got a lamb and the fox comes along yeah. and steal steals the lamb right takes the lamb away and eats it okay now the mother has a problem she has milk in a rudder Right. And nobody, no lamb to suckle that milk to evacuate the milk. Right. Okay. So what will happen in that in that particular experience is mm -hmm. what she now needs. Like at the moment, her milk ducts are like straws. Right. Okay. Now she needs those milk ducts to be like a hose pipe. Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To let the milk drain from the udder. So that the milk, because they have to back up and explode, right? Because there's right. there's no there's no lamb suckling suckling the milk off the udder, and she's still yes. lactating, right? So what nature does is it widens the it widens the milk duct in yeah. order to in order to help the milk to evacuate mm -hmm. um, in a situation where um, 
there is what we call a separation conflict right okay when when somebody essentially is torn from your breast right what hap- what happens is the milk ducts ulcerate and go from being like a straw yes. to being like a hose pipe mm. because of the biological wiring that normally i uh, back in in days gone by i mean yeah. women would pretty much be pre- either pregnant or breastfeeding you know for 40 50 years of their life right so they'd always be pregnant um or for a lot of their life they would be pregnant and breastfeeding right. so the widening of the milk ducts is designed to facilitate the evacuation of the milk from the breast when when you have somebody who's torn from your breast so right. in 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 the sheep's case the fox took took the lamb no more suckling of the of the udder in order to evacuate the milk to stop the milk backing up the other the milk duct is widened so that the milk can drain off naturally right mm-hmm. so uh, and and it's it's so so funny the parallels i mean the 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 most experienced person at dealing with this problem in terms of both the cause of it and fixing it is a farmer right because whether it's a whether it's a sheep or whether it's a cow, whatever predators will come in and um, and take away their calves or their lambs or whatever. And what right. this doc what this doctor discovered, Stacy, is that the biological programs that run in human beings are exactly the same in human beings, in animals, and in plants. Right. Okay. So the same rules apply. So when when the sheep has a lamb taken away she'll have a separation conflict right. from that from that lamb so the milk ducts will widen right now when she gets pregnant again and she has another lamb then she's got milk ducts that are like hose pipes and right. now need to come back to being like a straw again yeah okay so in order to facilitate that process of it going from a from a hose pipe to being like a straw again the milk ducts when she resolves that separation conflict yeah okay by having another lamb basically mm-hmm. what will happen is based on 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 the laterality of the animal one of the others will basically become swollen which is um basically it's the healing process of the milk duct going from being like a a hose pipe back to being like a straw again so you right. get inflammation and swelling in the milk duct which is why the the in introductory breast cancer you'll get swelling around the around the nipple and just above the, the above or below the nipple because it's the it's the milk duct that's swelling up that swelling will start when you resolve your separation conflict mm. okay so Now, Dr. Hummer, in Dr. Hummer's opinion, um, the the, the swelling and the inflammation of a milk duct um, is no different to the swelling of the inflammation when you cut your finger, right? I mean, the the definition of cancer is abnormally fast-growing cells. Right. Now, in the mammary gland, you have abnormally fast-growing cells, correct? But the Mm -hmm. purpose of that is to facilitate the woman to lactate and be able to breastfeed the, the sick child. Right. Okay? right. So mm-hmm. doctors are correct. The, the cells are abnormally fast growing. Right. They think that they're abnormally fast growing because they're broken. Mm-hmm. Right. It's yes. not the case. They're ab- the problem, the problem with, with, all of these modalities, conventional medicine and alternative medicine, is that basically doctors think those cells are broken. Right. right? Because they don't know the cause of the problem. Right. And they do not understand the biological purpose of the problem. Mm -hmm. When you understand the cause of the problem, that it was caused by the child getting hit by the car. Right. And you understand the biological purpose, which is to facilitate a mother to be able to lactate again in order yes. to nurse a sick child back to health again. Then mm-hmm. you realize that this is not a disease. This is just right. part of nature's extraordinary design. Yes. 
It makes That's sense. Rap. But here, here, what happens, right? So yeah, well, whether even the, even the person who goes to alternative medicine, um, you know, they go on a vegan diet and whatever, right? Now, right. they'll say, oh, yeah, I healed my breast cancer with a vegan diet, right? Wrong. Right. You can do a vegan diet. You can do chemo. You can do, I mean, doing a, a vegan diet is by far a better option than having your breast removed and doing chemo and all of that because the chances of dying are significantly less. Okay. <clears throat> so, but what people think is they think, oh, I healed my, I healed my breast cancer with a vegan diet. Not correct. It's, it's correlation, not causation. Right. The child got, the child got well again. If the child got well again, then yeah. the breast cancer is going to heal. You wherever you do a vegan diet, you do have a mastectomy, you do chemotherapy, whatever. As soon as that child is well again, then the purpose of that biological program has been fulfilled, right. and then and then the, and then the breast cancer will switch off because the purpose of the program has been fulfilled. It has nothing right. to do with the vegan diet. It's nothing to do with the mastectomy or the chemotherapy or the whatever protocol you followed there's no, there's no there's no correlation at all i find this very very intriguing very very informational i i am i'm very excited i'm actually going to read the, the book because i i really i i um i am very interested in finding out the the um the solutions and learning more are there ways that we can prevent it or is it tragedy that is the main trigger you can't, you can't, number one, you cannot prevent it. And number two, you would not want to prevent, to, to prevent it because it's there, it's there designed for our survival. Mm -hmm. Nature want, wants us to survive, right? I mean, yeah. in, Dr., in Dr. Hummer's case, it increased his testicles so that he could have a better chance of replacing the child he just lost. That's the survival purpose. In, right. the, in, in the mammary gland breast cancer, the, the purpose is to, to give the woman the ability to be able to nurse her child back to health again. I mean, mm -hmm. you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want that to not happen because right. it's there. It's, there to, it's no different to <clears throat> if you see a, a danger on the road ahead, what are you going to do? You'll put your foot on the brake or you put your foot on the accelerator right? right? right. in order to avoid the danger, right? So... Yes. Can cancer is exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, it's you're putting your foot on the accelerator or the or or the brake, in order to in order to be able to better manage the the danger that you're facing. Right. So, right. All, all nature is doing is is adjusting to its environment and an increasing and decreasing capacity of different organs based on headwinds or cr a crisis in life that you're facing. Right. So. You would you would not want that to not happen because otherwise your chances of survival are much less. Right. And it's nature and it's nature's design, right? I mean, and it's 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 part of our evolutionary development over millions of years. Right. Um, and 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 our continued evolutionary process, right? I mean Yes. What about the toxicity in our society? Or is that a totally different conversation? You know, um, all the different types of ingredients they put in the foods, the pollution that we're exposed to on a daily basis, the radiation of cell phones and microwaves, you know, those are, are you know, components that can cause cancer. But is that totally in a different area than what we're speaking in? Is it, or it can, um, can it help to try to do things, you know, naturally to help, you know, lessen the chances? Um, or is this, this just tragedy? We're focused on 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 the outcome of what tra tragedy causes for cancer, in a sense. Do you know what I mean? So, um, in 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 Dr. Hummer's medical discoveries, um, there are what he's called the five biological laws of nature. Mm -hmm. And the the first biological law of Germanic healing knowledge is called the iron rule of cancer. And the iron rule of cancer is that cancer can only be caused by what Dr. Hummer described as a biological conflict shock um, mm -hmm. or what we know today as an emotional trauma or life crisis. Okay. Um, there is no second 
cause for cancer. No okay. smoking, no cell towers, no no cell phones, no toxicity, no pesticides in our food. Now, the the these things can make you sick, right? I mean, if you take radiation, for example, radiation kills mm -hmm. cells. Okay, right. so you know you're going to have radiotherapy in your brains, then you know you're not going to get a good outcome because you're going to be killing your brains, right? right. Same way poisoning. I mean, we put chemotherapy inside our body, Stacey, right? Now, chemotherapy is what I mean. It's essentially it's a must. It's mustard gas, right? So yes. when we when we ingest these toxins, whether it's from medicine, chemotherapy, or whether it's from pesticides in food or whatever, okay, these things make us sick, right? Mm -hmm. So if you you try taking chemotherapy, okay, what your body is going to do is it's going to do everything it can in order to evacuate those poisons. Right. Okay? So you're going to start vomiting. You're going to have loose motions. You know, it's gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're, you're gonna smell like a robot, right? Because it starts pushing it out through all the pores in your skin and your breath. You're gonna have the metal taste in your mouth and all sorts of stuff, right? Because your body right. is des desperately trying to get the poison out of the system. Why? Because our, because nature wants us to survive, right? So. Mm -hmm. All of these, all of it, you know, is it better to eat organic than to eat GM? Um, of course, yeah. I mean, nature has a design. As soon as you start messing around with nature's design, I mean, you know, it has consequences, right? So, right. you know, is it ideal to to not live on processed foods? Absolutely. I mean, um, to eat organic food? Absolutely. You know, I mean, but do these things cause cancer no right no relation no relation okay well yeah. your your book we can find it on your website correct and um can you just tell us your website again yeah so uh the this book terminal cancers and misdiagnosis which is the best starting point because this is the introduction to these mm -hmm. medical discoveries. Uh, my name is Danny Carroll and my website address is danny-carroll.com and Carroll is the Irish spelling. It's C-A-R-R-O-L-L. -L. You can see when my screen doesn't really allow to. Um, that this is available. This one is available on Amazon um, globally and it's available in audio, Kindle, uh, paperback and in hardback. Uh, it's also available on my website. Um, mm -hmm. My book on breast cancer uh, at the moment is only available on my website. Okay. Um, and this is the cause and solution for breast cancer revealed. So this takes you through the detail of yeah. the mammary glands and the milk ducts and what affects them and what causes it and how to fix it. And all of the detail far beyond what we've discussed today. Um, right. is in this book with lots of case studies and stuff all of these books are written yeah. so that any anybody with a, a fifth standard education can read with no prior knowledge of the subject right can read understand and absorb the information right um so this is this is the first book of a 500 plus book series i'll be writing one book on every disease, brain cancer, lung cancer, testicular cancer. And also at the moment I've done, um, I've done IBS and ulcerative colitis. Um, right. I've done testicular cancer, uh, atopic dermatitis and breast cancer. I'm writing one on lung cancer at the moment. Um, and then uh, I'm actually setting up a, a, a collaborative book writing community. Um, oh, no to bring in both uh, writers, editors, and reviewers um, mm -hmm. to help me. I mean, I'm very happy to write these books myself, right? But I can, I can, I can knock them out at a rate of one book a month. Right. Um, um, and uh, that will, you know, 12 books a year, that's going to take me sort of like 40 years to write them all. I mean, if, if that's required, um, I'm very happy to do that. Um, I'm setting up a book writing a collaborative book writing community to try and mm -hmm. get them written in less than 40 years 
Um, yeah. the, the, the problem, the problem with this medical science, Stacey, is that uh, I mean, I've been studying it for eleven years, and right. it, and it takes it takes considerable application of mind to yes. be able to understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, and what these book when when you if you've got breast cancer, and you don't have time to spend ten years studying these medical yes. discoveries, right? What you need this is a small little Reader's Digest. Each book is like 60, 80, maximum 100 pages long, right? Right. In, in an hour, you can go in, yeah. understand the cause of the problem and how to fix it. And that's, right. all, we want to, and that's all we want to know. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm writing these as a, 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 at a fifth standard level. So anybody with no prior knowledge of medicine, no prior knowledge of this modality can read it and understand it and can learn the cause of their own problem and how to fix it. That's the plan. I think that's amazing. I, I commend you for all this. This is wonderful because, you know, you, sometimes you go into the bookstores, you go on the internet and everything's written in medical terminology. It goes right Absolutely. over your head. And, you know, if you're not a doctor, you're, the information is very hard to comprehend. And also mm-hmm. they don't look at it from your standpoint, you know, um, that, you know, right. a lot of medical doctors have a, a totally different standpoint. It all really depends where you went to school and, and how you were taught. So many doctors have different, different opinions. So, you know, it's nice to get a, a more holistic approach and to really look at it from a scientific point of view, but look at it and understand it, it helps you understand how the body really reacts and why it reacts the way it does. So, yes. you know, then we could, you know, have a clearer understanding of why our body is doing what it's doing and then figure out ways, you know, that we could actually help ourselves and, and to, to, to actually find the solutions to better our bodies and better our, our health and, you know, actually move forward and, and become healthy and actually, you know, not have to suffer like we were previously suffering. Absolutely. So, I mean, ma- ma- making, making, making these medical discoveries accessible is yeah. critical. And the, these books are, these books are not targeted at doctors, right? These books are targeted at, uh, 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 average man in the street and yeah. the idea is to make these medical discoveries accessible so that anybody with no knowledge of the subject no knowledge of medicine can pick them up yeah. and read them and i need i need i need so i'm 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 in a process of setting up the tech for this platform yes. but ultimately i need i need an army of people with no knowledge of subjects right because yes. i need i need people with no knowledge of the subject to be able mm-hmm. to come in and really say oh I didn't understand that so then you've got to rewrite it again put more case studies in make put it in simpler English make we have to make sure that these books can be read by anybody with no knowledge right and in order to do that I need people with no knowledge to come in and say no 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 Danny I don't understand that Mm -hmm. so uh, but I'm 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 starting an outreach process to start getting people into the community so that I mean they can learn as they go as well right I mean you learn the cause of of every disease known to man right but you know you can do it and write the books and then help to make these more accessible to to the masses Um, that's the plan anyway let's see how it goes it's early days (laughs) yeah well it sounds like a great plan and i wish you the best of luck and i'd love to have you on again because i'd love to talk about the other topics you've covered quite a bit of topic topics already and I'd love to have you back on so we could actually help educate others about other topics besides the ones we went over today and previously. Pick your topics. <laughs> Pick your topics. <laughs> They're endless, Stacey. I mean, I'm looking on your bookshelf, right? I mean, you want to do epilepsy? We can cover epilepsy. You, you do any damn thing, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And those are the reasons why I actually started writing. It was because I was very annoyed when I started going into the libraries and into, you know, and, and going on the internet and, and looking at the, the the information that was there, pre, you know, especially years ago. And uh, the information it, it is not meant for the average individual. You know, it's, it's still. meant. Yeah, still. You know, still, you know, you, you look up things and it's written in an abstract form and people they have no clue what you know the message is and and you know they're looking for specific things they're just looking for simple answers and direction and guidance and that's all they want and uh it's it's important to make it accessible for these individuals so they could actually understand what's going on and then figure out how to deal with their condition and 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 improve you know what they're going through so they can get through it 
you know, and not have to suffer. So this is very important. This is definitely exactly, exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd love to work with you on this and this is great. And I commend you and, you know, everybody it's Danny hyphen Carol and his, his, his uh, website address is the same as his name. And you can see his name on the left-hand side and it's com. And, you know, please contact him and ask him about his community that he's putting together and how you could be of help because this is an important topic and it could help many people, including yourself. So thank you very much, Danny, for all your information and all your help. I loved having you on again. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you so much. God bless you having me on again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Same to you too. Thanks, Stacey.